Hello everyone. So uh, today's video is on contact areas of teeth and the clinical significance. So when two uh, adjacent teeth they contact with each other, this area, uh, which is mostly on uh, the proximal side, whether it's the mesial side or whether it's the distal side, is known uh, as the contact area. So so when two teeth they contact with each other, the area which is contacting with both of them is known as the contact area. So the learning objectives uh, of today's session uh, are to identify contact areas of maxillary and mandibular teeth on uh, on either tooth models or on pictures. And secondly, uh, in this video, we'll be able to relate the clinical significance of contact areas and the embrasures that are formed when two teeth are contacting with each other and uh, the age related changes with respect to the contact areas of teeth and what happens if the contact areas are not restored properly. So we'll start with the uh, clinical significance of contact areas. Now if you just look at here, uh, uh, this there is no contact between the maxillary uh, central incisors and uh, because of this lack of contact uh, what has happened is that the incisive uh, papilla has actually grown into it okay so I'm, I'm going to draw the incisive papilla now this is the incisive papilla that is uh, that has actually grown into the uh, contact area and because of that so there's uh, a little bit of interdental tissue in between uh, the teeth and what will happen with this open contact area? Uh, food and uh, other particles and debris, they will, it will accumulate in this uh, contact area that will lead either to, uh, it will cause detriment either to the gums by, uh, by causing gingivitis or even periodontitis if this contact area is not closed. So, uh, in proximal contact areas, uh, they are needed to provide uh, the maintenance of proper arch form. Secondly, what happens is uh, when we are eating or chewing our food, it actually, uh, the, the masticatory forces are actually distributed throughout the whole arch from one teeth to another through these contact areas. So contact areas are essential not only for mastication and chewing purposes but also for, also for the health of the gum and the gingiva and uh, if we have contact areas it will prevent the accumulation of food debris and impaction and for example in this open contact area food and um, uh, debris it will accumulate so now where are these contact areas located uh, with respect to anterior and posterior teeth now if you look at um, and this picture is from the occlusal view uh, from the occlusal view, uh, the contact areas uh, of anterior teeth, they are in the middle one-third. Here, they are in the middle one-third. While in the posterior teeth, the contacts are uh, slightly facial of the facial-lingual dimensions. So, it's here, if you just look at slightly facial to the facial, to the, uh, the facial-lingual dimensions of the teeth. So uh, th this is for the posterior teeth and for the anterior teeth they are in the middle one third. Now we'll be looking at uh, these uh, contact areas from the facial and lingual perspective and also the occlusal perspective of maxillary uh, teeth as well as the mandibular. So we'll start off uh, with the maxillary anterior teeth and we're looking at the facial aspect. So now we have a uh, central incisor here and as you can see uh, both the maxillary central incisors are contacting in the middle as uh, in the incisal one-third so this is the incisal one-third where both of the teeth are contacting while the same little incisor sorry the central incisor is contacting with the little incisor uh, and this is the junction of the incisal and middle one-third okay so maxillary central incisors uh, in the midline, they are contracting incisal one third, while with the little incisor, they are at the junction of the incisal and uh, middle third. And while the distal of the lateral, the distal of the lateral, uh, it contacts the canine and it contacts it in the middle one third. 
so and uh, this is also the middle third is also the area where it is contacting the lateral incisor now the distal side of the little of the canine it actually uh, contacts with the first premolar in the middle third so this was just an overview of uh, the contact areas of teeth now the uh, proximal contact areas of maxillary posterior teeth so uh, this is from the facial perspective from the patient facial perspective they are located in the middle one third as you can see it is located in the middle one third but since the crowns on the premolars they are longer as compared to the molars so uh, they are much more cervically placed contact areas as compared to molars so molars they are much more occlusally placed so both are in the middle one third as you can see these contact areas are in the middle one third here and there, they are in the middle one third of the crown but since the premolar crowns are longer with respect to the uh, incisor cervical length as compared to molars so molars have a more occlusal uh, middle one third contact with each other now the proximal contact areas on maxillary anterior teeth from the incisal or occlusal perspective now they are located facio-lingually in the center so if this is the facial aspect and this is the lingual aspect so facio-lingually if we bisect it then this is the area where we can find the contact areas so it is in the center facio-lingually of uh, the anterior teeth and they are equidistant it meaning it from either from if you look at from the facial aspect either from the uh, lingual aspect they are both at the they are both equidistant so and here as well in the maxillary teeth these contacts are in the facial lingual center so they are in the center of the facial lingual dimensions so if we just draw a line that bisects uh, the facial lingual dimensions then it will pass through the contact areas of these teeth. now the occlusal aspect of maxillary posterior teeth now these are uh, the maxillary anterior teeth were uh, in the center of facial lingually but the maxillary posterior teeth the contact areas are slightly facial to the facial lingual dimensions so th this dotted line shows the facial lingual dimensions and the contact area is slightly facial to it similarly here uh, in the maxillary posterior teeth this is the first premolar this is the, uh, sorry this is the second premolar the first molar and the second molar and the contact areas are slightly facial to the facial lingual uh, perspective and similarly here this is the first premolar second premolar and we have the maxillary first molar and in all these three teeth the contact areas are slightly facial to the facial lingual perspective the dotted line is showing the facial lingual dimensions are the center of the facial lingual dimensions now uh, we'll uh, go over to the uh, mandibular anterior so the mandibular anterior teeth their proximal contact areas in, uh, just like the maxillary anterior teeth it is in the incisal one third in the midline while uh, uh, the distal of the mandibular central incisor and the distal of the other mandibular central incisor so they are also incisal one third this is unique only to mandibular incisors that all of the contact areas are in the incisal one third uh, similarly the distal of the lateral is also in the incisal one third uh, and similarly the mesial of the canine is also in the incisal one third the only difference is in the distal of the canine the distal of the canine when it contacts the uh, the first premolar it is in the middle third so it is much more easier to recall uh, the contact areas of mandibular anterior teeth as compared to other now the proximal contact areas of mandibular posterior teeth so mandibular posterior teeth are also located in the middle one third uh, similar to the maxillary posterior teeth but since the premolars uh, they are actually taller so they are much more cervically placed as compared to the more occlusal uh, aspect of uh, the contact area so uh, in molars the contact areas are much more occlusal 
as compared to premolars but uh, both of them they are in the middle one third so uh, the proximal contact areas of mandibular posterity are in the middle one third the these red lines are actually showing the uh, proximal contact areas that, that are in the middle one third now uh, lastly, this is the occlusal perspective of mandibular posterior teeth and similar to uh, the contact areas of maxillary posterior teeth, if we draw a line that crosses the facial angle dimensions, this yellow line that I have drawn, the contact areas are slightly facial to the facial angle dimensions. Uh, and there is one exception and that is the uh, mandibular uh, distal contact of the mandibular first molar the distal contact of the mandibular first molar is completely comprised of the distal cusp on the first molar so so the distal cusp is actually contacting with the is making the whole of the contact area but overall or generally speaking uh, the contact areas are slightly facial to the facio-lingual perspective or the facio-lingual dimensions of the teeth now uh, we go on to the age related changes in contact areas so what happens uh, with age is that at first these are contact points these are just uh, specific points in which the teeth are uh, two teeth are contacting but what happens with age these contact points become contact areas and then these contact areas they become broader with age and uh, to, to such an extent that uh, the whole proximal surface becomes the contact area and in certain uh, conditions in people who clench their teeth uh, unknowingly uh, unconsciously uh, these contact areas they become flat uh, and this condition in which people uh, clench their teeth is known as bruxism and in which not only the contact areas are flush with each other they are totally contacting with each other i mean the contact the whole proximal surface is contacting with the area and the occlusal plane is also flat and this is an example of uh, of a patient with uh, bruxism or clenching of teeth if you just look at these uh, contact areas okay you don't see it in the middle one third or incisal one third you actually see the whole surface that is contacting with each other similar to the uh, uh, to mandibular center incisors and laterals so what you see is uh, I mean there aren't any embrasures the only embrasure that you find is between the center and lateral, side, center and lateral. but there are, there are no embrasures and the whole proximal surface acts as a contact area so uh, but uh, as compared to younger individuals and older individuals what happens is contact areas are much more broader uh, in uh, younger individuals it uh, it is only contact points and uh, lastly one aspect one clinical significance of contact area is that uh, the brushing that we perform for cleaning purposes uh, it cannot uh, and it I mean it, it's not possible for a toothbrush to uh, get inside the contact area and clean the teeth from the proximal aspect so if you want to clean the teeth from the proximal aspect we have to floss there is no other way except to floss so brushing and toothpaste they do not clean the proximal surfaces and specifically the contact areas and the only way to clean the contact areas for gingival health and also for the health of the teeth and the mouth we need to floss okay so that is all for today thank you